Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Ferguson, and as president of Celebrity Dinners, it gives me the greatest pleasure. Jim Ferguson is a catering salesman living in New York. Nothing particularly special about him, until he finds out that he's a time twin with a British flying ace, James Biggles Bigglesworth. My friends call me Biggles. One day, Jim finds himself teleported through time to 1917, where he's on the front lines of World War I. He ends up saving Biggles' life and then is transported back to his own time and place. Then, Jim is visited by Biggles' former commanding officer, William Raymond, who has a theory about Jim and Biggles being interlinked across time and space and will be teleported through time to where one or the other is in some form of danger. I think Biggles is your time twin. Time twin? Listen, you got anything stronger than tea? Jim learns that he has to help Biggles destroy a German sound weapon to help win the war. Biggles, Adventures in Time was a great action movie that came out in 1986. I fondly remember watching it on VHS video as a kid and had read some of the Biggles books originally written by Captain W.E. Johns. There are a total of over 90 official Biggles books written between 1932 and 1999. Some of the titles are Biggles Learns to Fly Biggles Goes to War Biggles Takes a Holiday Biggles makes ends meet. Biggles takes it rough. Hmm, not sure about that last one. It sounds like one of those special parodies. With such a series of books, it meant that the original rights were going to mean a series of movies. The earliest versions of Biggles movies dates back to 1968, which was going to be made by Universal Pictures. The movie had everything in place, including James Fox playing the flying ace, but eventually it was cancelled due to budgetary and location problems. The rights were bought then in 1976, but they stayed in limbo, until producer Kent Warwin wanted to make a series of Biggles movies, stating, What we are saying is Biggles is our bond. Yes, Warwin wanted to turn Biggles into an episodic series of movies, much like James Bond, all based around a central character. The movie was written by Kent Warwin and John Groves. The original story was supposed to be inspired by the movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark, an action-adventure movie but based on the original books about the Flying Ace during World War I. Some people say that Biggles changed because of Back to the Future that came out in 1985. Back to the Future was a juggernaut of a movie. It is said that the element of time travel was added because of Doc and Marty, but the scripts of Biggles had already been finished and the filming had begun, so there's not much truth to that. Interestingly though, the writer John Groves went on to write the Back to the Future ride for Universal Studios. The movie was Hollywoodized a little though. The time travel element was added much later in the writing. Now listen both of you, there's a very good explanation for all of this. In the books, Biggles was only a teenager at the age of 17, Characters like Bertie and Ginger and Algy were all added much later in the book series. It's been developed. In 1979, Dudley Moore was approached and offered the role as Biggles, which he agreed to right after he finished filming Arthur. It was hoped that they would get Oliver Reed for the role of the villain von Stolheim. Dudley Moore eventually dropped out and it was announced that Jeremy Irons would play Biggles. When the movie actually went into production, Neil Dixon landed the role. He was tall, had a chiselled jawline, and fit the character well. But far less likely to botch the job. Cast as Jim Ferguson, the main of the film, was Alex Hyde-White, who was, at the time, relatively unknown. The two actors had never worked together before, but had become very good friends and stay in touch with each other still today. The movie also stars Fiona Hutchinson, Marcus Gilbert, William Hootkins, Michael Sibbury, James Saxon, Daniel Flynn, Francesca Gonshaw, and the late, great Peter Cushing, in the last film he would make before he sadly passed away. UK fans of the movies will recognise Francesca Gonshaw from the BBC comedy Hello Hello. John Hugh was brought on board, who was known for movies like The Twins of Evil, Treasure Island starring Orson Welles, The Legend of Hell House, and both of the original Escape to Witch Mountain and Return to Witch Mountain movies. 
Filming started in January of 1985 in London and the surrounding British countryside. There are scenes at Tower Bridge in London and the Tower Bridge Hotel. Interestingly, most of the cast and crew stayed at the hotel while filming there. A lot of the aerial footage was shot in Bedfordshire. People have commentated that during the aerial battle scenes, the land below is very battle-free, since it was supposed to be on the front lines of World War I. Before the days of CGI, the landscape does look very peaceful and not like what World War I would have looked like. The scene where the secret weapon was tested was filmed on location near Beckton Gasworks. This was also the filming location for Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket and, later on, the opening sequence for Your Eyes Only. The church scene was filmed at All Saint Church in Holdenby, which is still there today. The movie wasn't 100% accurate on the aircraft that was used due to budgetary constraints. Biggles' main plane was a Stample SV.4, a GBXNW. For his arch-rival, von Stolheim, the plane was a Boeing Stearman GAROY. Both planes were made in the early 1930s, but it's the best that the producers could afford. Obviously, the cast didn't fly the planes. Biggles' stunt pilot was Stuart Goldspink, and von Stahlheim's stunt pilot was John Gordon, who flew a bomber during World War II. Biggles' stample was also the same plane that was used in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Both the stample and the Stearman are still preserved today. In the scene where Biggles lands the helicopter on the flat wagon on the train, it was filmed 15 times before the director was happy with the shot. The helicopter was a Bell 206 Jet Ranger GBAKF, and the pilot was Mark Wolf, an expert pilot with over 160 movies to his CV, including the original Superman, Empire Strikes Back, a number of the Bond movies, and the Mission Impossible movies, including Mission Impossible Fallout. When Biggles gets inside the modern helicopter, he says, If you can fly a soft with camel, you can fly anything. This was very true. The sop with camel was notoriously difficult to fly, but in the hands of an experienced pilot, it was a dangerous weapon. It is credited with downing over 1,200 enemy planes during World War I. The plane that crashes near the beginning of the movie was a sop with pup. The crash was actually unscripted, and the script had to be written around it. In the end, it worked as a great way for Jim and Biggles to meet. Lend a hand. The music in the movie is the most 80s music you can imagine. The opening credits have a song that really gives you a feel of how the rest of the movie will play out. The songs Do You Want to Be a Hero and Chocks Away were written and performed by John Anderson of the progressive rock band Yes. The rest of the soundtrack is classic, if you were born at a certain time. It's odd that even though I haven't seen the movie for a while, I can still sing the songs and hum along to them. They stand the test of time. There is a great piece of 80s music over one scene where Biggles and Jim are killing Germans. Some people have said it's a little inappropriate, but to be fair, the Germans were the bad guys in the movie. Are we the baddies? <laughs> when Jim is in the Tower Bridge Hotel, he's about to be transported back to World War I. You can hear the song Another One Bites the Dust by Queen on the radio. Queen's bassist John Deacon co-wrote No Turning Back, which was written for the movie. Biggles was royally premiered on the 22nd of May 1986 at the Plaza Cinema on Lower Regent Street in London and went on general release the next day. Comic strips were in the UK newspapers and ABC Cinemas promoted it with discount tickets. The British press were not overly keen with the movie. It received mostly negative reviews. The negativity focused mainly on the story, the acting and the disregard for Captain W.E. John's original work. The US press was a little bit more forgiving. The movie wasn't released in the US until January of 1988, in those days before internet spoilers were a thing. Variety praised the movie for its action sequences and how good Neil Dixon was as Biggles. Most of the US agrees though that the movie was fun in places but overall a letdown, which is fair. Director Hugh later stated that the movie didn't go into profit until it found a cult following on VHS video and then through TV repeats. In 2000, the rights were bought to make new movies, but 
that was promptly cancelled in 2001. Biggles Adventures in Time is a silly movie, and if you think about the story too much, it makes absolutely no sense. But then a lot of movies are like that. What does that mean? What Biggles is, though, is a ripping action adventure with an 80s classic soundtrack. I know I had the video as a kid and watched it many, many times. I was 11 when the movie came out, and it was just my cup of tea. You had a great pair of heroes, an evil villain, Peter Cushing, aerial plane fights, the lovely Maria. What wasn't to like? Now that I'm a little bit older and a little bit wiser, the movie isn't the greatest piece of work, but it's still a movie that I fondly remember and will put on from time to time, just for the nostalgia about it. The end of the movie ended on a cliffhanger where Biggles, Algie, Bertie and Ginger were off for more adventures and Jim joined them again. I always wanted to see a sequel, but I'm still waiting. Get us out of here before they start realising you're not a god, you're just an American. Do you remember Biggles' adventures in time? Did you enjoy it? Or is it one of those films that you would rather keep in your memory and never revisit it again so it doesn't spoil it? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and head to The Last Movie Outpost for all of your movie news, reviews and everything cool about films.